In the last tutorial, I showed you about the jQuery admin in here. Now, um, I was poking around on their website again, and I actually found something that's a little bit interesting. They have an, a successor to it called the library admin. And what this one does is allows you to add lots of different libraries, Blueprint, Cayman.js, Dojo, jQuery, MooTools, and maybe some other ones, and you can add on ones that you want. So just be aware that um, that module looks like it could have been replaced. But we're going to come back to that at a later time. Anyway, um, in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at droplets. And droplets is really one of my favorite things about Website Baker. So these are the droplets that are installed by default. And there are some really fun ones um, that you can use that are here. Let's just take a look real quick, like this one, Lorem. Now, if I click on it, you'll see it, it says a name. It's called Lorem. It has a description here, and it has some code. And this is just regular PHP code that is being added together, and then it's going to return whatever that PHP code is. So this is basically a PHP code block. Um, and then down here, I've got some comments about how it's used. One of the things that I like to do um, is I like to use that up in the description, or I like to put it up in the description. And the reason why is you'll see that I can now copy and paste that from the um, uh, front page. If I save this and you'll you see that lorem right up here, I can copy and paste its use from the front. So I kind of like that when I create um, droplets. Anyway, to use this, all we have to do is go to a page like the home page here and paste this particular um, uh, snippet or sorry droplet and then change the variable that we want. So this says use the lorem drip, uh, droplet and y with the blocks um, variable make it 2. So it makes the blocks variable equal 2. So now if I want to actually see how that's being implied you'll notice that it is actually outputting two paragraphs for me that use that setting. So let me look at my source real quick. It just has regular paragraphs so that's good. Um, I don't have anything funky going on there. I was just wondering why this text looked a little bit different and it seems as though I just needed to save it again. Sometimes um, some code gets in there from copying and pasting and that was most likely because I'm using um, uh, what is this thing Chrome and sometimes Chrome likes to copy in a whole bunch of different code. So if I actually go back and look at the admin for the droplets and I copy and paste that again here it is you'll see if I look at my source it's got a whole bunch of crazy stuff so it seems though if I switch back and forth between the source it gets rid of some of that fancy stuff and if that's there and you really don't want it then you can also try removing the format to get rid of it so that's why that it didn't look correct at first now we're gonna actually create um, our own droplet as well so to create a droplet all you have to do is add droplet and this one's going to be called back and so the way that it's going to be used is just by saying back and then I'm going to find the code for it so the code happens to be somewhere here so droplets official library navigation back really simple one and this one is just a JavaScript back function so I'll copy that go to my website and paste it and then down here I can say uh, go back I don't really have to have the comments I really don't use them that much I really use this up here so go back to the previous page and that's an example call right there so let's save this you'll see that it comes up and it's blue now if we had something wrong here then when I've saved it it'll actually tell me that there's invalid code which is really great and so it helps you error check so that you're not getting a lot of mistakes now if you do go ahead and use it even though it's got an error we'll see on the front page it will actually show us a problem as well so I'm gonna go to page 2 and you'll see I've already copied and pasted back into here so let's take a look at this site 
if I go to home page and then back to, it even shows me the red text that says error in that um, droplet. So all we have to do is fix the droplet by putting that back in. Now we can refresh and you'll see that that droplet is indeed there and it is working. So droplets are great because you can do lots of cool things with them. For example, I'm going to go to YouTube and I'm going to create a YouTube embedding thing. So let's see, Max Eberly, he's actually a friend of mine. So I'm going to embed this into my site. And so here's the code that they've given me to embed this. So I'm going to go back to my site and I'm going to create a droplet and this is going to be called YouTube. And so embed a YouTube video will be what it's called. And I'm going to just paste that code in at first and just take a look at it. Looks like they're giving me a fair amount of code. I'm just going to break it up just a little bit. So now all we really need to make this work is return and then a single line and then at the end we need a single um, parenthesis again I'm sorry and a semicolon so now what it's going to do is it's going to return all of that code so to use this all we have to do is use YouTube as an example call Let's save that and see if it has come up and it's blue. So it means that we should be able to use it. So on page two, I'm going to change my back to YouTube. Save that page and let's go take a look at page two. You'll see it's actually embedded our video. Now this isn't so exciting because we already know exactly what video that is. We've embedded the video with the exact code that they've given us. But what we can do is actually change something in here. So I'm going to escape right here by putting in a single um, parenthesis, then dot and a string, and we'll call it ID, then dot, and then a single quote again. And you'll see it actually turns up kind of an orangey color for us. So what I put in was a single parenthesis, dot, which is to concatenate, then um, a variable, a PHP variable, the dot to finish the concatenation, and then the single um, parenthesis again in order to get us out of there. So now I'm going to add something to my description, and it's going to be and ID equals um, whatever code it might be. So let's save that. You'll see it's verifying it's correct. If we go and we test now, you'll notice that we get nothing. And the reason why is because that ID doesn't exist, or we haven't even passed to it any ID. So let's go to Pages and find that. And now what we know we need to add is and ID equals and then something. So all we have to find out is what is the ID, and it happens to be here, video, right up to there, right before the ampersand. So notice that we have that question mark and then video equals. This is pretty much the exact same thing that we're doing with our droplet. So in our ID equals, sometimes we have to paste things kind of a funny way here. It doesn't always like to paste from other sites, but we can fix that stuff without any problem. Anyway, we save that. Now let's go ahead and test our site and you'll see we are indeed embedding that video again. So what about if we try an overhanded jump shot and we want to embed this? All we have to do is find that video ID, come back to our site, and I'm going to actually do another one. YouTube and ID equals Let's paste that code. It's pasting it in the wrong spot. So there we 
we go. And with our two brackets, and we save. Now we go and we refresh our page, and you'll see that we now have two videos, which is really darn cool. Now we can add other things to our droplet, which is pretty amazing. What we can add is um, some other information, such as what about our width? If we want to put a width in here, we could actually have a width, possibly, that's added to it, and a height. Let's just do H and W. That's probably easier. So let's see. Now it says W and height. So now what we're going to do is add those to this. So now we have an height, oops, and height equals 300, and width equals 600. So what we're doing is we're adding height and width variables to it. So we need to also do the same thing to our files or to our page where we call it. Because right now, if we don't call anything, it might embed it at a very small, somewhat unusable size. So we want to go back to our pages. We'll find that page. And I know that we're going to add on to this. And height equals 350 let's say and width that means uppercase W equals 600 so let's just change one of them and see what happens now you'll notice actually wow that's cool they're both coming in at the same size I didn't really expect that but we can fix that let's let's try making them different sizes I think what's happening is it's propagating one to the other so this one would be 300, and this one would be 500. Now, we should see that we are getting different sizes, which is really darn cool. So the cool thing about droplets is that we can add different variables to our droplets. And I've used this for all sorts of different things. One of the things I've used it for is a fully functioning um, e-commerce shopping cart just by passing the variables to the to the um, droplet functions so droplets is really one of my favorite things in website baker and I hope that you take a look at some of the droplets that are there because they can be incredibly powerful and allow you to add all sorts of stuff to your um, website baker websites so let me know if you have any questions and thank you for your time um, I might make a couple more tutorials that will be going over a couple other features of Website Baker, so look for those in the future. Thanks.